Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this video is all about how you can leverage Docker in your upcoming data engineering projects. So here we are going to discuss why you should use Docker in the first place as well as every ins and outs and best practices of Docker and how it can supercharge your data engineering projects by margins. So let's take a deep dive of containerization using Docker. So without further ado, let's get into it. But the first question you may ask why we should use Docker in data engineering projects. So Docker will provide you a consistent and isolated environment for building your applications. So the benefit of it is you can develop and test your data pipelines or the applications on your local machine itself. And you can then confidently deploy them anywhere else on any platform. And also it will provide huge scalability which will increase your capability of handling large data sets by spinning up the containers as needed. But now let's talk about how easy it is to install it on your local machine. So it is quite straightforward process and we have already discussed that in our previous video where we have seen the end to end installation of Apache Airflow in Windows. So if you want to install Docker, you can see the first half part of that lecture because in that video, I have also introduced like how to install Docker in your Windows machine. It's a pretty straightforward process. You have a Docker desktop, which will give you a user friendly interaction with the Docker. Now let's talk about how to create a Docker file. So the heart of Dockerization is nothing but a Docker file. So a Docker file is nothing but a script that will define how your image should be built. So it will have like all the dependencies having like the base image as well as what commands you want to run on that Docker. For data engineering projects, our Docker file might include like installing different libraries like pandas as well as configuring different data processing tools. So once our Docker file is ready, it's time to build and run our containers. So for that purpose, we will use docker build command to create a container image from your docker file. And this image will encapsulate all your dependencies as well as your application. And then we will use docker run command to start a container from the image. And this container is nothing but an isolated instance of your application along with its environment. And for more complex data engineer requirement, docker compose is your best friend. So this Docker Compose will allow us for defining and managing multi-container application using a single YAML file. So using this functionality, we can configure the databases, masses queues, as well as the data processing applications all at one place. So now let's talk about the data volumes as well as the persistence. So as you already know, data engineering projects might deal with a large amount of data, which is also known as big data and Docker will provide a solution for data persistence. That is very important. So we can use Docker volumes to persist the data outside the container so that our application will ensure that our data survives in case of container restarts or the updates. So now let's talk about the monitoring and scaling, which is like a vital part of every data engineering projects. So we can leverage different Docker monitoring tools and services for monitoring our container performance as well as any bottlenecks and the resource utilization. So when our data workloads will start growing, Docker scalability really shines. So we can utilize like the orchestration tools like Kubernetes and the Docker Swan for large scale deployments. So there you have it. This is all you need to know about Docker and how you can leverage it in your upcoming data engineering projects. So as you already know, and we have talked about by dockerizing your applications as well as the data pipelines, we are gaining like consistency, portability, as well as the scalability, which is like a huge plus as compared to the applications which are deployed using conventional methods. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a subscribe and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching.